Hi, I'm Josh Rushing, sitting in for Fimi OK, and you are in the stream. Today, African hip-hop artists are considered some of the most socially conscious musicians on the scene. So what are they fighting for? Our digital producer, Malika Bilal, is here with me. Malika, mm -hmm. we're already hearing it. We've we already are. started a different. Yes. I like it. It is taking all the willpower I have not to dance a little bit <laughs> in my feet. Give in. Just give in. <laughs> I want to. Well, the community has already given in. They are sharing with us what hip-hop means to them. Of mm -hmm. course, it's universal, and this is something that our global audience can relate to. So I want to share a Facebook message. This one, uh, excuse me, a Twitter message. This is all the way from London. Uh, this person tweets in. His name is Yared. He says, it's about mobilizing people through sound. People are drawn together through through music and they create new values and new futures. Of course, we want to know what you think as well, what it means to you. Tweet us your questions, your comments with hashtag AJStream. The stream isn't just a TV show. We're actually a community. And so we, we listen to each other. We, we, we talk. We go back and forth. And that means we want you to jump in. So check out our Google Plus page at the link below and share your story ideas. You could end up on our screen just like these trending hashtags. Guns, money, women, that's what commercialized hip Western hip hop has come to mean for many. But its beginnings were really different. They were actually grounded in social change. Now it's African artists who are staying true to the roots that really grew out of New York's urban neighborhoods. The continent is home to some of the most socially conscious hip hop artists of today, with lyrics pushing for an end to corruption, better education, and a fix for AIDS. The rappers with us today are as much activists as they are musicians. So what difference are they making and at what cost? All right, we've got a solid lineup to help us figure this out. With me on set is Mozambique's Mohamed Yaye of Native Sun, which is dropping a new album in May. And joining us from D.C. is Molly's Amkulel, an award-winning hip-hop artist and one-time law student. Emil YX, a founder of the legendary South African hip-hop breakdancing group Black Noise. And a man who doesn't shy away from controversy, Jot, from the Senegalese group Kurgi. All right, welcome to all of our guests. Let's start it off right. How about Muhammad with some freestyle? Go for it. Okay, let's go. Bismillah. I don't believe in politicians. Whenever they speak, they colonize your whole mind through a media siege, televise their own lies so you can swallow and see, then start behaving like the monkey that they want you to be. Little puppets wake up and start facing the truth Our tax money spent on wars, they neglected our youth Suppressing the truth, they lie in the news That's why I spit that real every time in a booth Check it, my enemy is not you, please hear me my brother But the one who made the guns to kill one another We carry straps and shot food cause the money is good But tell me who flooded all the drugs in the hood This world is nothing but a tester Empty mirage, a journey through the physical before meeting with God So I educate myself to politics all around And I'll never be surprised if the ship's going down <laughs> I love bringing rap to Al Jazeera, I love it Alright, so who was that laughing over there? Was that uh, Amkuel? You're next, well, it's your turn okay, How about some no freestyle? Problem. Go for it <laughs> Le peuple à la rage, on tue ses rêves, ne sait plus en quoi avoir foi. Le peuple à la rage, on tue ses rêves, ne sait plus en quoi avoir foi. S'il n'y a plus d'espoir, toujours la même chose. Soyez pas surpris si un jour ça explose. Regarde-moi, regarde mon Maliba. Tu fous quoi, mais pourquoi c'est comme ça Chacun pour sa gold technique, caméléon. Nouvelle religion, avoir des millions. Faible maillon, c'est la loi du talion. T'as des scrupules, crève, oh c'est mignon Nous avons trop attendu. J'en ai marre d'avoir la main tendue. SOS, SOS. On est en état d'urgence, c'est un SOS, SOS. Faut que ça change, SOS, SOS. 
On est en état d'urgence, c'est un SOS, SOS. Faut que ça change. All right, I actually have some of that video that we can hear uh, a little bit later on from the same song, mm -hmm. SOS. All right, uh, chat, I want to go to you next. Yeah, cellule africaine de l'Elysée, avec les réseaux Jacques Focard, et close non publié, impose tech tocar, dictateur en cagoulé, conspiré, faté ou nous oumniobé, comploté, sonne le nous France yobé, c'est bande malfra, deal kill, Cuba. Les réseaux Pasqua, Mafia, Fopa, la guerre de Biafra, les diamants de Bokassa, diplomatie secrète, blanchir Khalis Tipet, indépendance coup de bluff, coopération mati de oeuf, Rumi Roumandat, affaire malgache, Angola Gad, double jeu, double discours, coup de feu, fleche d'Arfour, humilier les consulats, même pays, même constat, malice, milice, bain de sang, we're going to go to a mill who looks way too young to be considered one of the godfathers of hip hop in, in Africa, but he is. Show us what you got, man. Wow. Kijk, je verstaat niet zo'n woord aan die land, maar die land kan niet gekoppeld is, zo'n job leren die land. Het vraag ik pas aan die Zulu, wie was eerst die, die naam pas aan die klik, zit die kooi aan hulle gegeven. Een kooi min pas aan angry looking man, elke klik in die sik pas aan kom oorspronkelijk van die zand. Poesman en hotmoot is gebruik om te beledig, maar oorraal staan die rotskins nog stevig. Power to the people. Wow, wow. All right, talk about power to the people. Let, let's begin with you, actually, since, since you were the last to go. Talk to us a little bit about what it was like to be an emerging hip-hop band, artist in South Africa, right when, say, Nelson Mandela was getting out, apartheid was coming to an end. How did you fit into the change that happened there? Yeah, we, we come from a background of, of uh, you know, social justice and being involved in the UDF and the political movements in South Africa. So it was an easy flow from actually assisting in the voters' education. Um, unbeknownst to us, of course, that what we were getting into was just a signed agreement to get rid of all of our wealth into the hands of the same people that were in power during apartheid. And so a lot of the, 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 the hip hop artists also fell prey to the illusion of a, demo a democratic change in South Africa. And uh, ultimately, uh, you know, find ourselves after the release of Nelson Mandela being faced with uh, um, restrictions on what we can say in the general media just because of, uh, of the, you know, the idea of um, it's not in the spirit of reconciliation or reconning the silly nation as a lot of the MCs would put it back then. So there's a, a shocking change for us. On the one side was the global euphoria of freedom and on the other hand was the reality of the illusion of democracy without enough people understanding what their rights and, the, but and, wasn't and what was really going on in the country. Emil, didn't you run into that kind of headlong with the, the song about um, who taught you to hate yourself? And then that, that's a yeah. line from an actual Mandela speech. Can, can you give us a bit of yeah. the story about the reaction to, to that song and what happened? Yeah, we, you know, we tried getting it played on the radio. They asked us which song you want to play from the CD. And the CD is called Rebirth. And when they, when, you know, we thought, hey, this is an opportunity, let us, you know, play this track. Um, they immediately after the song uh, in introduced, they came running down the uh, station director and actually stopped the song from playing using that same excuse. Mm. And this is just one of many um, times that commercial, again, understanding that commercial radio uh, dictates what what gets said. And because it's commercial, it's about actually selling products and not necessarily about enlightening people about the, the fate of the masses of people in the country. Right. And Emil, you mentioned resistance. Of course, that's how a lot of hip hop here in the United States got started. Hip hop as, as a genre recently celebrated its 40th anniversary in the US, but a lot of it has its roots in Africa. So that brings me to this tweet from Wit Wax. Mohammed, have a listen to this. American hip hop is inspired by an African oral and musical tradition, uh -huh. this person says. And African hip hop comes from American hip hop. So Mohammed, I know you were telling our producers ahead mm -hmm. of the show that when you were younger and first starting out you were looking at some of these American rappers mm -hmm. who were wearing their Africa chains That's right. and you know taking it back there it, tell us about how that resonated with you well for me um, <coughs> I, I was forced to flee my country Mozambique at the age of two during the Civil War and I fled to Portugal and growing up in Portugal in the 80s it was a, an extremely racist place 
uh, I remember going to school and my sister who was only six years older than me she was constantly told that uh, by the teachers the Africans were only three quarters human beings this is in the 80s in, in, in Portugal so I couldn't go to any literature I didn't have anything that available that ed educated me about African history uh, the history before slavery so when hip-hop came into my television screen and I saw people who looked exactly like me wearing these African pendants and even though I couldn't understand what they were saying because they were speaking in English at the time I could really appreciate and just connect with their energy and they had this sense of pride that I had to embrace and I was just proud that once for once now I'm seeing all these other, chil all these other children that are trying to imitate mm -hmm. that you know, so that gave me a self of uh, a sense of empowerment. Mm -hmm. it, it makes me think of I, in American hip hop. I often see kind of two versions of Africa. There's an idealized Africa, and Chad, I'll, I'll aim this at you. And when I mean an idealized, kind of romanticized Africa, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking maybe like Nas and I can be whatever I want to be, and the way he talks about Africa in that song. And then there's it's kind of it's almost poverty porn from someone like Rick Ross, mm -hmm. who goes back to Nigeria for. Uh, what, it, what was that? Hold Me Back is that, that video. W what is it like watching American hip hop artists project what they believe about Africa back to Africa? What's it like to be an African and receive the, the, those different visions of it? Jack? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, for me, I have like um, a problem with the, when people say that hip hop is coming from, from US, first of all. Of course, start from you in the US in the United States but with who people coming from Africa for us receiving hip-hop in Africa it was like uh, hip-hop was back in the motherland so that's how we receive it if you can see like the rhythm we got it on that's the same flow that's the same nation that's the same skills but uh, American hip-hop coming uh, artists coming in Africa making video or shows I can give a very special specific example uh, of the festival of called Festman in Senegal happened in 2011. That festival was supposed to be the festival of Neg uh, Desar Negre. There was a lot of American rappers who was in that festival and they asked for a lot of money to the government of Senegal to come out there and they call themselves African. They, they say they want to go back, found their own roots. So for me it doesn't make sense. You can't, ha you can't ask to a government like Senegal a poor government, a poor country, you ask them to pay you like uh, 10, 10 million dollars to co come over to make a concert, knowing that Africans, they like hip hop, knowing that you, s you claim yourself that you are African. So for me, that was a great opportunity for a lot of American rappers to show that they believe and they think really in Africa. Mm -hmm. And by the way, and we have an example like Akon saying and claiming that he's a Senegalese. He's for in the kind of the behavior, in kind of participating in the society, how do his work, he never produced any Senegalese hip hop artist. Huh. He produced in Nigeria or in South Africa. For me, I think like it's it's, it's not it's fake. In, it's kind of fake for me personally. I have a lot of respect in a lot of artists here in the United States, like Nas, you just mentioned, like Common Sense, like Mos Def, like Talib Kweli, f because in about of their lyrics. I can see there is something very, very, very intelligent, very smart. B they, they more think about being a role model than being a star. So, which is the main problem of the hip hip hop industry. So, for me, artists, uh, hip hop artists coming from US, going to Africa and asking for money, that kind of money is just like like, like a business, like making money. Right, right. But if the roots, <laughs> the reality is. If they claim themselves like being African, they can come to Africa, make shows, and contribute to to kick out the malaria or kick out the polio exactly. or or help people to have unemployment or something like that. Yes, mm -hmm, exactly. Hey, Chai, I want to play uh, one of your videos here. I, I have it on my laptop. This is here. You go. The, the whole premise of the show is that hip hop has become more socially conscious in Africa than uh, in the U.S. I, I'm looking at this very, very political message in the video. Is is that a fair uh, assessment of hip hop in Africa? Is it used more in the political process? 
I mean, you know, first in 20 years old, 20 years behind, Af young Africans, they didn't have like the opportunity to say something because traditionally they say, no, you are young, you can't talk. That's, you, can't, you don't have your word to say. Mm -hmm. And when hip, -hop, when hip hop come to Africa, people say, wow, you can do this and say what you think say you believe and participate in what's gonna be like the change the mm -hmm. social change mm -hmm. and the difference is pretty much the society the kind of society we have the kind of problem we have for example i can't come from senegal and make a video showing naked lady or bling bling and talking about nonsense because i know in my country that's not my reality mm -hmm. i have my own topic i want to kick malaria out of my country i want to kick poverty I want to talk to the corrupt politician. I want to talk to the un to about the unemployment of youth. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about you know uh, the non-educated people to un to let them understand that we have a lot of problem now. I no, want to talk I, about. I, 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 I hate to interrupt you, but what you said is really uh, something that I'm seeing online. It's the the talking about the reality in your country and that's something that a lot of people are, are talking about they want to see more of so there's a video right. comment here from someone um who who talks about the biggest thing that he sees missing that he wants to see i want you all to have a listen to this video comment the issue of corruption that is one of the things they have not yet tackled very very well in their music so that struggle for anti-corruption in Africa could receive a big boost from the hip-hop artists and that is one of the issues they really need to focus their lyrical genius in. Mm. So Um Kolal, he mentions corruption. We got a lot of tweets about that also saying that's what yeah. needs to be focused on. You do focus on that. Uh, tell us about some of those songs. Um Kolal? Uh, sorry. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, my second album, the name was uh, Surafin. Surafin in Bamana means pot de vin, like corruption. So um, that's a problem that we have like in Mali too and in a lot of other, uh, other African countries. But I think it's not only specific in Africa. But I think that like Chad said, like uh, the non-employment of the youth, it's very important to work on that. We have a lot of different issues and mm. people also need to feel safe and secure in their country. It's the situation that we were living in Mali and we are still living now because we had this military coup and also the problem in the north of the country. So corruption is there, but on the other hand, we really need also people who really love their country, love their mm. people, and really try to make things change because nobody will come to save us. Yep. And we cannot uh, accuse anybody else for trying to destroy or spoil us or kill Africa because we mm. as African, we are, are the first responsible mm. and the one of us who has the chance and the opportunity to talk like today. We have the duty, I think, to talk about things that really matters. We can mm. do songs about fun, party, being just creative for the love of art and music. I do that, but on the, mm. I also do what I think like it's a question of survival mm. and to construct a better future for my children, for the next generation. Mm. I don't want my kids to be forced to have to travel to, to, to have hope in the future. The youth in, in Africa, it, it's not everywhere the same because uh, yep. I want to be like, Africa is not like a poor continent, like with only bad things happening there. Because it's like, I'm a little bit schizophrenic when I'm saying that, That's because right. I don't, I don't want to share this bad image that we always talk about Africa, yeah. bad thing. There's a lot of good things happening in Africa, but most of the time we don't really show it. We don't really, really see it on the TV. So then you see yourself on TV, they talk about your continent, your country, and they say, you have nothing, you are nothing, you are <laughs> poor. And you, at the end, you finish by believing it. You but finish yeah. by thinking, yo, I'm nothing. But it's not true. Hey, wait, 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 so, but, but you yeah, put out an SOS this. here. I have the video, check what? it out. Listen to this. Only, only that you show. All right, so my French is only so-so, but I'm getting that it's an urgency. There's an SOS. How, do, how does that match up with what you're saying there? This SOS, um, I wrote this song eight months before the military coup d'etat. So uh, because we could feel in the air that something 
was going to happen in Mali. So I was talking about the frustration of the population because every time we as a rapper in Mali and in West Africa in general, in Africa, engage artists, people come to us because they respect our work, our lyrics, and they know that they can like share their feeling through us. So they come to see us and say, this is happening, this is happening. So when you meet like 10, 20 people a day talking about the same thing and they say, we feel that it's going to explode. You know, we have to do something. Is the reason why I wrote SOS. It was before the military coup d'état and the situation in the north of the country. But people were very frustrated. So, and then I said, if you don't take care, if you don't take care of people, don't be surprised if one day it explodes. And it's what has happened. So this talking about those issues is like, I'm forced to talk about those issues even though I don't want to spread that image uh, around the world. But yeah. that's but just the, the sad truth. Emil, e Emil I see you wanting, you're nodding your head. Yeah. You want to jump you know, in. I, 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 I want to know what you, wanna, you, what you want to say, but I also want you to couple that with an answer to this tweet, because I have to get community <laughs> and they want to join this conversation. Okay. JM says, does lyrical activism still hold as much weight as it did before? Afri African youth, he says, are now more entertainment oriented. So your yeah. thoughts on that and what you wanted to add. I wanted to say that what the guy just said is very important. We mustn't be fooled by um, pointing a finger at the other MCs or the ones who are speaking about what is what is about getting paid or, or, or being entertained. Or that's the reality that they're faced with. And, and, and we need to carefully uh, try and create a, our own media within Africa because our voices will never actually get heard unless we have our own vehicles of expression throughout Africa to get those messages across. So kids aren't hearing um, the, the, the MCs and the songs that, 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 that you're playing now because the commercial power that exists, especially in places like South Africa and the, you know, the channels that have a reach throughout the whole of Africa, those channels are extremely powerful and they, 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 their messages are strictly commercial, pushing an international commercial agenda. So we don't have much control over that. And that's why a lot of these MCs you'll see have to go out to their communities in order for them to spread the message, which is you're fighting almost a, a losing battle because daily these kids are exposed to media that is about what's the latest thing you can buy or sell, you know? And so that power, I think we need to also understand to order in order to really change it, you know, to point a finger at like, you know, whoever's coming to your country from the US is not necessarily the one that's the problem. It's, it's about us understanding that for us to change things in Africa, we need to find a vehicle of expression that isn't controlled up from outside of, South, of the different parts in Africa. And as South Africa is a, a prime example of this because all the people that held the power, the gold diamonds, the recent uh, um, killings in Maracana uh, because of Lonman, you know, nobody points a finger at that company that's from London, but they're pointing a finger at the South African government. So very carefully manipulating media for the benefit of the status quo throughout Africa. I mean, Africa fed the world its wealth, mm -hmm. you know, and so we must realize that pointing a finger at each other or at the, uh, the, the, the victims, we should be very careful about what that is and also understand the size of this beast that we're up against because it still exists throughout Africa and it won't allow, it won't take its rope from around the Africa's neck because it still gets its wealth from Africa. I want to get one more video in. We don't have very long. Uh, this is Native Son. Here we go. My biggest enemy is the ego inside. Struggle every day not to keep him alive. So grateful for this wonderful life. Every breath is a blessing, I can't deny. There ain't no moment quite like the present. Remaining in stillness, connect to the essence. Speak with no words and smile with our eyes. Light up our hearts like candles at night. We all have a say in the choices we make. So we gotta take control in the path that we take. All right, I actually don't have long uh, for you to respond to this, but we're going to bring it up about positive messaging and rap. And I also want to bring up the idea of how you balance the social activism and commercial success as your careers move along. Uh, on our next show, so join us in the post show. We're going to talk about that. On the next show, growing up is difficult enough, but it's even tougher if you're a transgender youth. So when are they old enough to decide who they are? All right, until then, we'll see you online.
All right, welcome back to the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking hip-hop in Africa. So um, let's start freestyling again here. We've lost a mill from Black Noise. And uh, if you're watching the main show on, on TV, the music that we came into the show and out of the show of, that was Black Noise. Sounded really great, so you can look that up online. And right before we went out of the show, we, we had just shown a clip of yours from a song called Senses. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to you about... The, one, how effective are you with positive messaging in hip hop? And then two, are you able to find an audience for that? Uh, you know, and I guess for you, it's international. You're out, you're out of London. Yeah. So. Um, I think we, as lyricists, have a social responsibility. So it's important that we do have positive messages if we want to empower the youth. I mean, I personally don't, do not like, do not, I, I do not like the state that the youth are in. So if I don't, I can only do whatever I feel I can do and that's that so I, I don't I don't have another option but to be positive or to try and be positive to empower the youth uh, um, and sorry what was the second part of your question the well don't you mean when we were in the main show and I said we yeah. want to talk about two things we yeah. can kind of broaden that out but I'm really curious as you as you become more successful it's one thing to like push off the idea of bling bling and, and I'm about social activism but then once you start becoming more financially successful how do you balance the two I've never had that problem because that's not my reality like the brother said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's not my reality I, I remember where I come from and I remember my aim and my goals and objectives and I just stick to that it's just mm -hmm. as simple as that well, I want to take this back to the community because they have lots of questions. So, of course, we're in our post show, and right before we enter our post show, uh, we did have to lose Emil because he had a sound check, as Josh mentioned, mm -hmm. a sound check for an event tonight here in Washington, D.C. So if you are here in the district and watching this show, check him out. Now, someone tweeted us about that event. Uh, SCZ says, you were all involved in the One Mic DC Festival, that's the name of the festival. What did you teach and what did you learn? Chat, I'll, I'll post that one to you. What have you learned being surrounded with other artists uh, from all over the place? I mean, for me, it was just great, you know. Um, it's kind of experience to share, it's kind of reality to share. And yesterday night we were in a studio, have a whole song all together. That's just great, that's just nice. And for me, my responsibility is to show that in Senegal we have nice hip-hop, we have great hip-hop with great flows and techniques and skills but we have something to say and something important to say mm -hmm. to the world to, to the world that look here this happened this happened but we are our own media mm -hmm. when you are a rapper you have to be a media because most of the media now they're not reliable at all so we can be the reliable media the mirror of our society to let people see themselves in what we're doing, in what we're saying, how people can capitalize, how people can find themselves in our messages. That's very important. The social responsibility, my brother just say. That's why I was very happy to be in that festival and to know that is, I'm not alone in that fight. There is a lot, there is a lot of activists and people are stopping to be, to do slacktivism and now they are activists and they're doing activism and which is just great and I meet a lot of people doing a lot of stuff in their home country and um, we're gonna share some you know some experiences some strategies to change just the world yep Uncle Al, do you agree with that the idea that you are the media in your country uh, I agree with Chat what he said that when we uh, this opportunity given to us through nomadic works uh, to perform during this one mic festival and to meet a lot of other artists, it shows us that we are not alone mm. and we can uh, be stronger because I can go to Mozambique, I can go to South Africa, to Dakar, to Senegal. Senegal, I have been there a lot of times. Like Chat is a brother. This it's my family, Senegal and Mali. We are so close. And if I have the opportunity to go in a English speaking country in, Af in Africa, because they, this, this is also like something very hard for us. West Africa, we speak <laughs> French. So uh, if I go there, I can work with them so we can share our fight and share also people who 
are interested uh, by socially engaged uh, artists, lyricists, and creation. Mm. Are you guys able to hear each other? Like in, in Mali, who are they playing on the radio for hip hop? Excuse me? Well, in Mali, who are you able to mm. hear uh, in terms of hip hop artists? Are they playing oh. American artists? Are they playing African hip hop artists? The first song that I heard and that uh, introduced me to hip hop music, it was Public Enemy 911. <laughs> so we, I, I knew about Africa Bambata, Grandmaster Flash, Cool Modi, Rakim, uh, a lot of all, all do, those guys after we switched to French hip hop because we started with all these American rappers after Vanilla Ice, Ice MC and so mm -hmm. and so to come to LL Cool G, etc. and now Jay-Z, Eminem, etc. So and after the French hip hop started and mm -hmm. we started to follow I Am, mm -hmm. uh, MC Solar, NTM, etc. And after in Africa, for us in Mali, we have seen the scene of the hip hop in Senegal becoming big because they started the hip hop a little bit before us so Here even you know. though chat i like to sass him he's my brother but i uh, must yeah admit the hip hop in west africa started a little bit one day in senegal before us <laughs> for everybody <laughs> but we follow each other we follow each other now it's like easier through the internet even though the access to internet is not so popular yet because of a lot of economical and strategic reason but you know we don't have like we are not all equal in front of the access of internet but we are trying to use it mm. <laughs> well I, I have a question of course being the only female on this panel today where are the female rappers do you know of any do you have any uh, of those that are inspiring you in your country Mohammed I'll start with you because I know you're part of a duo uh, that's right. and a female is part of that duo so that's right um, so I'm part of a duo uh, the, the the, the other person in our group is not actually a rapper, she's a singer. Her name is Serena Leah and she's, um, she, yeah, she's a very talented artist. But if in UK there's also two, uh, a, a specific group that I really love called Poetic Pilgrimage, which are two Muslim women from Jamaica who live in UK. Mm -hmm. And if I go back to my country, there's rappers such as Yvette, which is one of my favorite female MCs. Um, she's not just a great MC, but she's also a human rights activist, a human rights lawyer. Uh, um, she's an edu educator and she's just a great role model for women. And I feel that that's something that we definitely need to have within the hip hop community. Can, can I throw one, out? one of my yeah. favorite rappers yeah. is a woman, but she's out of uh, Chile. Her name is Ana Tiju, mm -hmm. and she's playing at the Kennedy Center April 5th, I think, as, as a part of this, one this entire festival. series. Yeah, the one mic thing. So Ana Tiju, uh, she has good. a song called uh, Shock. That's really great. Um, hey, Chad, I wanted to ask you, is, is it fair that we've been talking about Africa in this kind of broad way? I mean, how similar are your experiences there in West Africa with the Mills experiences down in South Africa? Yes, um, I mean in Africa for uh, at the broadcast you say you're talking about the media. Yeah, well, we're just talking about African rap and what it, how it's different there than the U.S. But I, y you know, yes. South Africa and and Senegal are, are miles and miles apart, right? And speak different languages. Is it incorrect or is it too broad to speak about African hip hop and, and throw Emil and you kind of into the same same bar barrel of apples there? Yes, we, um, the African hip hop, for example, in Senegal. We, we speaking uh, we speak our own language uh, wall of most of the time we have like some couple of couple of mc who speak english or rap in france or stuff but you know very earlier senegal have hip-hop i can say that the first hip-hop album in senegal was in the 19 so that was pbs and mc uh, mc leader mc solar uh, we had like hip-hop very 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 early in senegal and um and tr very early also rappers in Senegal start to be engaged to change the way they were doing hip-hop the way they're thinking about hip-hop the way they writing their lyrics is they were more involved in terms of being part of the society and doing their playing their role in the society than doing mainstream hip-hop and stuff but we still don't have like an industry like we don't have like the American scene we don't have the American market we don't even have the uh, South African or the Ni Nigerian one because in terms of the population they they are million and million, and in Senegal we are just like 14 million, uh, you know. 
it's very different in terms of like the market and the, but we have a lot of festivals we have a lot of private media we have a lot of show radio shows and tv shows and it's very 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 developed we even have like a lot of uh, a, a school academy hip-hop academy like we have like over five hip-hop hip -hop academy in senegal so hip-hop we have like the streetwear people have like their own studio a lot of home studios a lot of festivals going on and you know Sounds hip -hop like we all need to book a ticket to Senegal. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hip -hop is Mali Senegal, too. Right? Mali for yes. And Mali too. <laughs> and Mali no, Mali, too. Mali, Mali is not that good Mali. because they still come to Senegal to record their album. <laughs> so it's not, oh, it's not that good. The West not that good. hip hop tour <laughs> is what we should do. 20 years ago. <laughs> all right, guys, look, I'm going to wrap it there. I want to thank you guys for being on. Um, Go to our Storyfy page and, and find all these artists. Look them up. Check out their, their work on YouTube. I uh, definitely want to thank Native Sons, Mohamed Yaya, for being here. Thank you. Uh, from Mozambique and from London. Uh, Mali's Amgulel, Emil YX from South Africa's Black Noise, and Chat from Senegal's Kergi. So check all those out on our Storyfy page, okay? And on our next show, growing up is difficult enough, but it's even tougher if you're a transgender youth. So when are they old enough to decide who they are? Until then, we'll see you online at stream.aljazeera.com.